Hello, this is Greg Allison coming to you on the 27th of February, 22. Tying them on deck is 114600 600 hours Central Standard Time. My friends, I got a breaking alert for you. The United States has apparently gone to DEF CON 2. DEF CON 2 is the next level to the trigger cock for nuclear war. I'm gonna go into that in a little bit. Why? Because allegedly, and if I get this from multiple sources now, Russia has put, gone on special nuclear alert with Vladimir Putin hiding down in his nuclear bunker. All their forces are on a special nuclear alert according to sources. And this seems to be an over response from him. It seems to be very much over the top. And I have sp uh, spoken in the past about things like this. I have talked about how it's really in the mind of the individual and worldviews. I've talked about that and how I think Putin's worldview is skewed by the power that he has. And this is something we're going to talk about a little bit more in a little bit. But this may be a very dangerous situation that we're coming into. Very dangerous. So we're going to talk about that, guys. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Bang the update notification bell and click on. Good Lord, well, we're still here. I'll be bringing you more alerts about things to come. Now, this is not saying that we're going to have a nuclear war. But this is the highest level we've been at DEFCON since the Cuban Missile Crisis. And uh, of course, DEFCON officially, I think, is classified. But I'm getting this from multiple sources, guys. And it, it's not just the website that declares DEFCON. And it's on there, too. We're going to go all into this. So just uh, buckle up, guys. I'm going to try to make this short because I got other things I've really got to do this morning. But uh, do check out uh, uh, right now. Uh, get ready. Get yourself in a posture to be prepared to bug out, go to your bug out location, uh, grab whatever preps you can from the stores, places you can get it quick. Uh, do get seeds if you can get them. Order them from my link below uh, at True Leaf Market uh, because you don't need to be able to grow your garden. If you have a nuclear winter, you have to store those seeds maybe for a year or two or three or four. <laughs> but it's best you have those. They're a whole lot easier to store than about anything else to grow food. Seeds are the best for the long term. Uh, but you're going to need short-term stuff <clears> or <throat> stuff that can last you a while. So do go to prepwithgreg.com and check out my special right now. We can get $50 off of a four-week supply of food that lasts 25 years or $150 off a three-week supply. And let's hope that the world lasts long enough for things to ship and, and the supply chain to not totally unravel. Uh, and like I said, this is not and it's saying that we're going to have a nuclear war. We came very close many times in the past and it didn't happen, but that don't mean it won't. won't. We have been playing Russian roulette literally in more ways than one all too long in this nuclear age. And we came, we came so close to nuclear war in the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. The only reason we didn't go into nuclear war is a uh, submarine man refused orders to launch a nuclear submarine. He was ordered to do it and he refused to, to carry it out. Well, maybe we will have a level-headed people like that with a finger on the trigger today that are so ordered by superiors, they will not follow through. But how many orders will go out? What's the chances, guys? Uh, all right, we're going to go into this. I got this news this morning from uh, David Pine. You may have seen David Pine on my channel. I've interviewed been in him, I believe, three times on this channel so far. He is the Deputy Director for Operations of the MP Task Force on National and Homeland Security serving under uh, Dr. Peter Vincent Pry and I, uh, and also uh, Glenn Rhodes. I am the Alabama State Director for the same uh, organization. As you know, I have chaired two power grid defense conferences. So what is behind all this? Well, David Pine sent me this alert a couple of uh, hours ago, and I've been trying to do some research on it since, but I just can't wait any longer. We got to get this out here so you know to be ready. Uh, apparently, uh, according to Putin and, and some of his sources, it has to do with the, the sanctions we put upon them. You know, Putin had said before, he didn't give a rat's mm -hmm about any sanctions. He said it was a D-A-M, you know, kind of word. Uh, but, but you know, and now he's acting like he does. But also, let's know that the war in Ukraine is not going well for Russia. Not at all. In fact, Belarus may be coming into it. Uh, and there's a lot of things behind that, too. We'll talk a little bit about that toward the end. But we're, first, we're going to go to this DEFCON thing. Well, this uh, fact that we took... Uh, uh, that uh, we took Russia out of the SWIFT banking system. And apparently that really has, has hit them harder than they anticipated. We know that Russia has been trying to go off the dollar standard for some time, but apparently they're not immune to this. Why that raises to the level of, uh, of what's happened is they say that Putin's in his bunker and uh, he's put all his nuclear forces on special alert. Why in the world would it elicit that level of response? Well, again, as I said, I think Putin uh, ha has a worldview that's highly skewed 
happen. That's not a good thing. It t- tends to happen to people that are autocratic, authoritarian in their power. They develop, a, I've talked about this many times, guys, and I've always said this is the danger. And I was worried more, more worried about little Kim because he's definitely got a worldview that's way out there. But uh, apparently Putin has been over afflicted by this. It's so it seems. All right, guys. Uh, and you know what? I know everybody's going to say, well, Russia's got the right, it's this, it's that. You know, I don't give a rat's ass. That don't even matter right now who's right, who's wrong. We're both wrong. Everybody's wrong as far as I'm concerned in this whole thing. So don't go finger pointing right now. What you need to know is that we're at risk. Get ready. That's why I'm doing this video. Don't get, get caught up in the nuts and bolts and pointing fingers. Just get ready. Now, if you want to, you can do it. Feel free to call your Congress critters and elected officials and give them your peace of mind. If you want to do that, go to freedomrestorationfoundation.org. I set that website up. Go to the Action Center. It tells you everything that you need to know how to find your representatives and how to contact them at the federal and state level. And uh, you can do that, guys. So but, but hang on, guys. Let's, let's go into this because I always get all kind of flack when I put something out here like this. And people get all caught up in the nuts and the bolts that don't, are trivial at this point. They don't even matter compared to where we're really at. Right now, what matters is where we're at. It's the cards that's on the table. How they got there, that's what on the bridge already. Cards are on the table right now. We got to deal with the deck we're dealt. dealt. Okay. I'm going to do some screen shares. I hope here. Hang on, guys. Ding, ding. All right. This website, bear in mind, is not the official, uh, and there, there is no official thing the public's going to see on DEF CON levels, but this is the one that most people go to, and they here they do say we're at DEF CON too. Now, you may uh, wonder about this, but now look, if you think that this is all just uh, fake news, here is the head uh, uh, of the of NATO, General Secretary, uh, <clears throat> or Secretary General, NATO Secretary General, Jen Stalinberg. He's already speaking out about this, guys, about uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, decision to put his nuclear forces on special alert. So if you doubt this, NATO has already spoke up and our Defense Department has already responded. It's already even on Fox News. When I first heard it this morning, this was on no news sources. I should have broken it then, but I had something else I had to do immediately. I wasn't able to come in here and I, and I wanted to do a little research before I posted this stuff. And I've been looking for collaborating data on this. So the collaboration data on DEF CON 2 is probably a little short con- considering it is actually classified. But uh, if this is true, and uh, it appears to be that uh, nuclear uh, alert from uh, Putin that he's put his forces on special alert, then yeah, we would be at DEFCON 2, most likely, or, or very likely. So this is uh, very serious, guys. Uh, it does Again, it doesn't mean that we're going to have a nuclear war, but it does mean one is suddenly far more possible. And it don't make sense, really, while we're even here. I mean, here we are. This is uh, what Wikipedia's got on DEF CON. So you can go check this out just for your, just look up DEF CON on Wikipedia yourself. And you can go in here and read what these things mean, what the levels are. DEF CON 2 is fast paced. Next step to nuclear war. Armed forces are ready to deploy and engage. Guys, this is it. Ready to deploy and engage in less than six hours. DEF CON 1 is the pistol's cocked. That means everything is armed and ready to shoot. That means all, all you got to do is press a button and missiles will launch. Uh, bombers are in the air. Uh, yeah, DEFCON 1 is basically the war's imminent or already begun. Imminent or already begun. I mean, DEFCON 1 is, we're there, guys. Uh, so we're at the next step to be in, we're there. If you look at the history of it, there's no, we have never been to DEFCON 1. Thank the good Lord for that one. But uh, we have been at DEFCON 2 briefly. DEFCON 2. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, armed forces, uh, with the exception of armed forces in Europe, because Europe wasn't part of that, were ordered to DEFCON 3. And we would be sitting at DEFCON 3. On October 24th, Strategic Defense Command was ordered to Strategic Defense Command. See, this, the DEFCON levels uh, will vary from force to force to DEFCON 2. <coughs> While the rest of the De- uh, armed forces remain at DEFCON 3. SAC remained DEFCON 2 until November 15th. See, that's the guys that will launch our nuclear weapons. So there we are, guys. Uh, we, we had DEFCON 2 during the Persian War for a brief period. Uh, so uh, that's it. That's all we've ever had DEFCON 2. I don't know why we went to DEFCON 2 with the Persian Gulf War. Uh, but that was, you know, apparently one day just there. Uh, 
we've never had it declared nationwide. It's never been on the United States. Uh, you can see DEFCON 3 has been limited, like uh, September 11 attacks. Uh, but we've been at DEFCON 3 apparently. Now we're apparently at DEFCON 2 or so it is reported. Uh, and I, got, I did get that from uh, David Pine. David Pine, as you recall, has been involved with the Pentagon as a high level uh, negotiator in the European theater, which is where all this stuff is going on. So David Pine has got some background in these areas. Li uh, Russian uh, Ukraine war live nuclear strike by Putin would be catastrophic for world. Hey, Amen. I don't think he's going to hit Ukraine though with a nuclear weapon. I'm not saying that. He's not aiming those there. He's aiming them at either Europe or the United States or both. And it also could be that he would launch an EMP attack instead. Got to remember, the Russians consider an EMP attack to be electronic warfare, not nuclear warfare, although it would destroy the United States of America if we were hit by one now, because we've not hardened our power grid, which I've been demanding for years, uh, along with quite a few other people. So uh, we got to get our power grid hardened, guys. And uh, here's Fox News. Uh, Putin's nuclear uh, forces action is escalatory and unnecessary, U.S. defense uh, officials say. Uh, all right, so guys, this we're not kidding. We believe this is not an unnecessary uh, step taken, but an escalatory one that can make things much worse, much more dangerous. There you go. Whoever this official is, I guess they're not naming themselves. We have no reason to doubt the validity of this order, but now it's manifested itself uh, but how it's manifested itself is not completely clear yet. Wow. All right. I can only open so many tabs in this computer at one time. It's very memory, memory limited. Now, this article was written before all this stuff come out. This just has to do with why Putin would invade Ukraine. And they were already seeing... Putin is being paranoid, having lost his mind uh, due to uh, you know, his uh, small sphere of influence, his inner circles, his small bubble that feeds him information, basically, uh, it reinforcing his very tight, highly skewed worldview, apparently. That's where this article is coming from, which dovetails with what I was talking about in my live session Friday night. Uh, so, so guys, this is what I've been talking about. So uh, the COVID uh, pandemic scramble Vladimir Putin, uh, Putin's mental health sparking paranoia, which led to invasion of Ukraine. Some experts, well, I don't know, that sounds a little over the top there. Why would it be for the bug that went around? He would have done it. Who knows, though? Putin's uh, insistence that he ordered troops to his uh, peaceful neighbor's territory to protect people suspected of bullying and genocide, of which there is no evidence, was fueled by fears for his mental health. Okay, so there's a lot of people questioning his mental health. Uh, even before he uh, put his forces on alert. The fact that he would put his forces on alert seems to reinforce that his mental health may be questionable. But see, this is the kind of stuff they're talking about. The optics that Putin has when he negotiates with people, he puts them in a great distance. It says that he's powerful on one hand, but it also says he's close to no one. And uh, this is the way he seems to be operating, guys. Uh, Marcon, when he met with Putin, he also was put at great distance on the big table like that. Uh, so uh, this is the his uh, counterpart, the head of uh, Azerbaijani, uh, across the table there. Uh, Ilham uh, Alev, I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> it's not on my Anglo redneck tongue, guys. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, but there, there, it's not been going well for uh, Putin's forces in Ukraine. Let's talk about that a moment. I think this is the last. I'm gonna stop the share here. Some enough articles to share with you guys. Um, for one, probably, you know, people wonder why, you know, that, 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 that the cities in uh, Ukraine weren't just knocked flat by the Russian forces when they first went in. Uh, for one, uh, I've been told, and I've heard rumors that the uh, there were orders not to uh, do a lot of heavy casualties on the civilian population. And it, that would be a hard sell to the Russian people to do that because the Russian people and Ukrainian people have been tight in many ways, historically speaking, although they, they've been growing apart recently because of all the tension since uh, 2014, especially. Uh, and I'm not, you know, look, I'm not here to blame one side or the other. I'm just here to, to, to point out some facts. So uh, the uh, uh, apparently, uh, Putin's forces were focused more on military targets initially. Military targets was their objective. 
for that reason. I mean, you know, you heard Putin say that, hey, we're one country. How do you be one country when you're going in and conduct a wholesale slaughter against another people? But that these things, uh, but, and I also did a video earlier talking about, well, you know, Russians really waited too long. They can't really roll their tanks reliably across the, the fields. They're going to be restricted to the highways and roads. And, and that being restricted to the highways makes them targets. Of course, they get stuck in the fields. They'd be targets too, and even more so. Well, that's what's happened. They've had entire, oh yeah, the Chechnyans just recently made a big, plan. yeah, we're going in, we're going to send in a big military convoy. And guess what happened? Their convoy just got decimated. Their tanks got utterly destroyed. Uh, there have been a large number of tanks, military trucks, and other vehicles destroyed on these highways. They're sitting ducks. Uh, and a lot of times the, the, the Ukrainians will take a bridge out and these guys can't cross because they don't have all their pontoon bridges spread it out everywhere to immediately deploy and get their forces across. And so they're getting bottled up in places. And uh, Ukraine's had the upper hand uh, so far. The Russians have failed to take any major city in Ukraine, far as I know, but I understand they are in, right now fly, fighting in one of the regions of Kiev, so they're, they're right into it. I'm hearing there's heavy fighting. That's the reports I'm hearing, so may or may not be true. Uh, but furthermore, but the, 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 you know, look, Ukraine's got a lot of corruption. Uh, and, you know, th this is one of the reasons that NATO never took Ukraine in is, is due to the, the high level of corruption in Ukraine. And a lot of that may stem from, you know, how the governments, you know, the coups and different things that went on, which I don't want to go into too much today. I've talked about them at great length in other videos. So I don't want to repeat myself too much. But we, many of you know that a certain uh, family in America who's got somebody sitting in a big white building, if you know what I mean, uh, has very close to the connections, including the son thereof, having been on the energy company board of directors. He was such an expert in running energy companies, right? Mm. Yeah. So there's some really strange business going on there. So I don't deny that for one second. Uh, <clears throat> but at the same time, uh, to have them under the people there under an invasion is an atrocity uh, that uh, even a lot of Russians are having a hard time stomaching what is happening, that, that their forces are in Ukraine doing what they're doing. Uh, like I said, there had been a lot of ties. Between them. And you got to remember, too, one of the other reasons Russia don't want to go in and just de uh, devastate Kyiv right off the bat is because Kyiv is considered the mother city of Russia. Really, it is. It is where the Russian people started. It was the first capital of the Rus people. Kyiv is their motherland. It is the mother city of the motherland, although it's not in the same country. It's one reason that Putin considers them both one country. And maybe one reason that the power grid never went down there. Okay, also, well, there, there have been spots where it has gone down. But uh, overall, there is still power in Russia. Because also, maybe the way the Russian forces are moving in, they may need that power to pump their own fuel to operate. <laughs> but uh, the Russians are not doing well. Even with all that, uh, Putin expected fully to take the country in 48 hours, and that has failed. It is now Sunday here. They, they went in Wednesday night or Thursday morning, and here it is Sunday, and uh, they are Sunday evening over there, and they have failed to, 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 to make much progress at all. And they're getting their, uh, you know, what's handed to them. They are getting kicked or getting hit. You know, it's not the size of the dog in a fight. It's the size of the dog, a fight in the dog. And apparently the Ukrainians got that, that fight in the dog. And furthermore, Putin has succeeded in making a hero out of Zelensky because Zelensky was given, you know, option. And Biden says, hey, we'll fly you to America. Come over here. Just come over. We'll fly you out. He says, no. I'm, he said, send me ammo instead. I'm going to stay here and fight. So he's made a hero out of Zelensky. Uh, and I'll give, I got to give Zelensky credit for that. Now, one of the things that Putin had, had said is he's going to denazify uh, Ukraine. And I've heard it reports that the, some of the National Guard units in Ukraine are Nazi, but, but the president of Ukraine is a Jew. <laughs> Zelensky is Jewish. Is he a Jewish Nazi? Some of you would probably say so. I, <laughs> that's a big leap. I don't know, guys. But the fact of the matter is he's Jewish. Uh, good or bad. Whatever the case is, it doesn't comport well with what Putin is saying. Also, uh, 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 I don't know, it just further underscores this idea that Putin has got off in his little worldview. But apparently Putin's not along with that, because if you listen to Sergei Laroff, the uh, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs for Russia, he's constantly talking the same language that Putin's talking. So <clears throat> this apparently is uh, his inner circle uh, is on the same page or pretty close to it, but a lot of uh, inner circle people have also left Putin. 
Putin's uh, had something of an exodus. And uh, prior to the going in, it said it's, that some of the generals in Russia didn't want, want to attack Ukraine, didn't think it should happen. And most people, a lot of people in Russia were caught by surprise because they thought that Russia was going to go into the Donbass region of, of Luhansk and Donetsk and protect that region directly, not invade Ukraine. So when there was a full-blown invasion of Ukraine, a lot of people were taken by surprise because they expected, okay, we're going to defend our people in uh, Donetsk and, and Luhansk, collectively the Donbass region of Ukraine, and Putin went a lot further real fast. So a lot of Russians, including the Russian military, were surprised by that. Uh, Russian military guys are begging for food in Ukraine. Some of them are. They're, they're trying to get food. They're trying to get fuel. Yeah, and there were some that were left at an airport back a couple weeks ago, uh, and stranded, and they were running around begging for food. You got to remember the Russian conscripts only pay two thousand rubles per month, In U.S. dollars uh, before the ruble started tumbling, that was about twenty-five dollars. You know, now it's going to be somewhere uh, less than twenty-five dollars. Guys, how how much can you eat when you're making twenty five dollars a month? Now, if they're at the barracks, they're getting fed. But when they're out and about, and if, the, if their supply chain's broken down, they're not getting fed. I see here uh, bad planning and supply chain of uh, military support. And when you put deploy a military, when you deploy soldiers, you've got to have a rock steady supply chain feeding uh, and fueling and ammo providing to those forces. And it appears that that is broken apart that uh, it's been strong uh, too big or something or that they've had a lack of planning. Look, Ukraine's twice the size of Texas. It's the biggest place that Russia's tried to invade in modern times. Now they went into Georgia, they went into Syria, they've done a few operations here, there and yonder, but nothing like this. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, Putin cut his teeth on taking Chechnya, which he probably shouldn't have done that. I mean, everybody thinks, a lot of people think Putin's great and wonderful. He's got a halo around his head. Uh, because it seemingly is not part of the NWO, but uh, I, I would say that Halo's got a lot of tarnish on it at the very least, because uh, he started out as prime minister of Russia, uh, and it's thought by some people that the so-called Chechen bombings in Moscow were actually false flag operations used by Putin as an excuse to attack Chechnya, in which something on the order of 80,000 people, civilians, were killed. Chechnya uh, should have had the right of self-determination, just like Donbass and Luhansk, I would submit. Uh, so if they want to succeed from Russia, they should have been permitted to do so, but they've been taken over. And of course their forces are being used today in uh, Ukraine and they're getting decimated. Now those che Chechen units uh, get, are getting decimated. Uh, several tanks, an entire column of Chechen tanks destroyed. So, uh, you know, when you're fighting guerrilla warfare and you're using Turkish, uh, uh, drones or any kind of drones, and you got uh, anti-aircraft uh, shoulder-firing missiles like Stingers, you know, which are developed at Redstone Arsenal where I've worked, and you've got uh, well, actually my NASA day job is based out of there too. And I don't speak for them, okay? I'm not speaking for Greg Allison here today. So I'll never speak for this channel. I don't speak for any of the other associations I have with Greg Allison. So sweep that aside. All right. So the uh, I was just you know making a plug for the Stinger <laughs> and the people that developed. The U.S. Army, the uh, you know, there's the javelin missiles that are taking out the tanks. Uh, these are very potent weapons, and little missiles when when uh, when a, a individual can go up with an uh, individual missile, fire from the shoulder, and take out a multi-million dollar asset. Uh, that's a force multiplier. That is a game changer, and that's what's happening, especially when those tanks aren't free to move through the forest and in, in fields, and they're they're stuck on the highways. You know, I did show a picture of the 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 uh, Baghdad highway where the Baghdad, uh, where the troops were free and fleeing, where Saddam's troops were fleeing Kuwait and they got totally, totally burnt out completely uh, on that highway. So yeah, you know, a highway is a rough place to be in a war. And it's not a, you know, if you can be seen, you can be shot and killed in three to four minutes in warfare. Anybody that's a soldier knows this thing. If you're a vet and you don't know that, where the heck was your head? I, you you weren't paying attention to anything. You you weren't the combat individual, that's for sure. But you just shouldn't even have to be combat to fully understand and realize the power of forces today and how fast you can be taken out if you're seen, known. But so there you go. The the, the Russians are uh, uh, getting losing big time now. There's talk that they may use thermal Barrett weapons. What's thermal Barrett weapons? They're, they're also known as fuel air explosives. 
that are good at low altitudes where there's plenty of oxygen. As a, as a weapon comes in, it's fuel, full content. There's not a oxidizer fuel mix like you normally get in an explosive where it's all contained. It's just totally fuel. But then it's aerosolized into, out into the atmosphere and then detonated. So you're using actually the oxygen content of the atmosphere. So your bomb carries a pure fuel load. But the, 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 what makes this especially deadly is that explode, uh, fire burns where it's got the most surface area between fuel and oxygen. So if you can aerosolize all those fuel particles, then you can make something highly explosive. That's what happens with grain dust and grain elevators, because every little piece of grain dust is tiny and it's surrounded by oxygen. So if you can get a, a bunch of grain dust with a lot of oxygen throughout it, and, and detonate it, you get a huge explosion. Look at the Beirut uh, explosion back last year. That looked like a nuclear dev device going off. And some people are using that explosion claiming there's mushroom clouds over Syria and blah, 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 blah. No, that was uh, Beirut. Uh, and it was probably one of the largest non-nuclear explosions we'd ever seen that was, was man-made. Uh, but that started in a warehouse with uh, probably some uh, nitrate fertilizers that went off, but it happened to have the grain bin silo right next to it, and that grain silo went off. That's what really created the big, well, it was a fire, then a small explosion, that grain bin went off, because uh, I think they had some other explosives there too. So that you had a fire, you had an explosion, and that grain bin was detonated from that. And holy smoke, that was a humongous explosion. Uh, fuel air explosive is like that. Well, they use them. If they do, that means Russia's got a new level uh, of escalation in Ukraine. It would mean, would mean it would be changing their policy of how they're attacking, which would backfire on big time. Uh, Putin's made a lot of mistakes going to Ukraine. And there's no way around that. And you know, they're seeing it in the way they're getting kicked. We're also seeing it in the way he's reacting. He's getting very paranoid. The fact that he started out this whole campaign the day before he announced the acceptance of Donetsk and Luhansk republics as republics, uh, they recognized them as such. He held nuclear force drills, which are normally done in the fall, and he directly oversaw them. Yeah, sitting in his bunker, apparently. So there you are, my friends. He was sending a message, but it was made, that's the way we saw it, but maybe it was more than a message. Maybe he was really telegraphing what he really feels and thinks inside. It might not have been a bluff. He could be bluffing now with what he's doing. If, if, this is, if this is a bluff, it's crazy. It's insane to put the world at this level of tension over something like this. His whole idea of going into Ukraine, well, I don't care what you think, is over the top. I could see him defending Donetsk and Luhansk. Uh, and I got a lot of close friends who would argue vehemently against that. And, and some have been, and including one who's been there. Uh, and you probably know who I'm talking about. He's been there, and uh, and he will tell you that the, 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 the Donetsk and Luhansk are not pro-Russian, that they've uh, been taken over by operations using uh, Spetsnaz forces from Russia, and it's all a ruse, a ruse from Russia. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not feet on the ground there. He was, he was there. So, you know, I got to at least give him some credit for that. But, you know, uh, you know, I'd say, you know, let people vote and have a good, you know, a uh, way of telling that the votes are legit and let, and let them decide how they want to rule their future. I believe very much in self-determination. So, <clears throat> but self-determination does not include determination set by somebody from outside coming in and playing with the polls. Uh, but, I, but there is predominantly Russian speaking. So uh, uh, I, I see some credit toward uh, what also given the historical example that Donetsk and Luhansk actually petitioned to be with Russia and Lenin put them in the Ukraine back in uh, 1921. They uh, it, it tried to be separate. Their separation went back to I believe 1917. I have to go back and check that. But they they were trying to be separate from Ukraine way back then. So something something's cooking here, guys. But whatever the case is, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is that. Putin seems to have a worldview that's highly skewed because he's, you know, been fed by the emperor, you know, has no clothes thing. You know, the emperor's, you know, it, here's what he wants to hear. He's got himself so insulated that only yes men talk to him. And even his inner circle may be in the same category. And, and they talk with each other. That's who they talk to the most. And they reinforce whatever paranoia they, they, they talk themselves into. 
and uh, their worldview apparently is skewed highly. I've talked worldviews many times. I've talked rose-colored glasses many, many times on this channel to try to get people to appreciate that you got to understand where somebody's coming from. You got to understand their worldview to, to know who they are. And sometimes it's hard to believe the worldview they're, they're out on. All right, I've talked enough on this. Here's the facts. It's reported by multiple sources that Russia is heightened its nu nuclear alert, gone to special alert. It's reported by some sources that I have that are, it should be highly reliable that Putin is actually hiding in his nuclear command bunker at this moment. Uh, I don't know, somebody sees some live video out running around, share it, let me know. I like to see it. Anything that we counter this claim is would be welcome information. Uh, I'm hoping all this isn't true, but then you get the commander of NATO talking to it. You get uh, U.S. Defense Department's talking to it. This has come up on several news sources, both from Europe and the United States. So, uh, and I first got it before it broke in any of these sources from my inside contacts within the MP uh, Task Force for National and Homeland Security, which is what I would expect. So my sources are, you know, are well connected inside before it spilled out to the news media. Now, I'm sure by the time I get this recorded, it's probably up on, be up on a few YouTube channels. But guys, the bottom line is this. We are in a far more dangerous level than we anticipated. It's over the top. This should not be the case, but whether it is or isn't, whoever is at fault or isn't at fault, I blame everyone, uh, it's happened. You know, the, the, the American administration has not been very smart. Uh, Putin uh, is, you know, and, and, and Biden is wanting to look tough, but he's about as tough as a toothless hound dog, uh, an old toothless hound dog uh, who can already hardly walk, it seems. And, and Putin is uh, paranoid, paranoid Putin. Uh, so we, we, we've got a dire situation. Let's hope it resolves itself. Pray. Contact your, use the Freedom Restoration Foundation website, freedomrestorationfoundation.org, go to the Action Center, call your elected officials and say, we need to calm this down. What is going on? At the same time, we got to be prepared because Putin may just launch. I hope not. I hope not. But, you know, you said, no, you won't do that. That's crazy. Well, now, I would also said he wouldn't have done what he just done. I would have said he wouldn't go into a special nuclear alert. I would not have thought that over what's going on. Uh, that is blows my mind. I just did a video Wednesday night with the intention of asking, is, is Vlad gone mad? And I really didn't get into that too much because I had so many people in the messages, you know, trying to defend him and telling me to cite my sources and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, what I did. And, and, and you know, the, well, you got to talk about Dynast, blah, blah, blah. You know, I have. And I've done it before. And they act like people act like I never talk about these things. I talk about them a lot. You know, people also will look at the title of my video and already draw conclusions what it's all about, never watch the video and go on attack. So really? And of course, those people have not watched this video either. And they've already summed up what this video is about. And good Lord knows, you know, if I put a, a video uh, uh, out and call it rabbits and do a video on sharks, I'm going to get a lot of people talking about rabbits in the chat room. I guarantee you, I need to do some testing and just see how many people get fooled over by it. I guarantee you, for postings on Facebook, nine out of 10 are going to, the comments will be about rabbits and not sharks. Those people just, you know, they make snap judgments. Oh, I know what this is all about. No, you don't. You have no clue unless you really do some research. And that's what I advise you guys to do research this stuff. Anyway, but the bottom line is this the bottom line is you need to be prepared. Start scoping out your bug out locations if you've got a bug out there. Reinforce what you got at home. Start talking to people that will be in your mag group. This could happen. Missiles could be flying now. I don't think so, but it could be. Uh, or it could be like uh, this could drag on for months. I don't think it will last months, but it could. It could. Maybe years, but I really doubt that. I seriously doubt it's going to be months. I think all this will. I think all this will wind up in the span of a couple of weeks, span of a couple of weeks. But I've had my sources who have had dreams and visions telling me that February, I'm from way back. Uh, I've had somebody telling me it's this Greg, this is all going to happen in February. I've seen it. 
and you know then there's uh, Stacy Zavicki's dream of, of the uh, uh, two missiles launched from offshore of Venezuela that put an EMP attack on the United States. Very credible, especially uh, coming from somebody that knew nothing about strategic uh, activities, didn't even know what an EMP was. She contacted me to ask me all this stuff, and she had the, the uh, oh my God. I've done plenty of videos on that. So guys, get ready, prepare, prep now. If all this stuff doesn't happen, our economy is already hitting the, the wall. Uh, few, uh, I could do a whole video, I could do several videos on the fact that uh, the nitrogen prices, uh, fertilizer prices, are, which had already tripled, are, are about to hit higher prices because of the, the situation with, with the embargoes with Russia and Russia cutting supplies off, the Russia's cut off nitrates, food prices. If, if we have total peace going forward, we're gonna have a huge spike in food prices. Food availability is liable to be impacted. That's why, you know, I'd, I'd, get, I'd stock up right now, guys, I'd stock up. On anything and everything that you might need, right now is the time to stock up. Consider it an investment, the prices are gonna go up anyway. So having the extra stores, is just gonna be an investment in the future. And, yeah, I would go ahead and order. If you can afford it, go ahead and order from prepwithgreg.com. We got the specials right now. I expect those prices to uh, escalate very high, very fast. You know, if you go check out uh, Canadian Prepper, he's talking about that a lot right now. All his sources, including Mountain House, is telling them that they're about to jack prices up very dramatically. So do what you can while you can. Get what the getting's good. Uh, and I'm going to say, I uh, hope everybody the very best. Let's hang in here and pray. But don't panic. Just be smart. Never panic. Because if you panic, you lose your head. Then you lose your head. So, guys, pray. Stay centered. Tell your family you love them. And God bless. And Greg out.